Well, tonight on the podcast, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about once again, uh, your favorite mayor in Chicago, Brandon Johnson. There's a lot of black people are very concerned about what's going on in Chicago. And we had talked about on the previous podcast that black people in Chicago does not want what happened to the black people in Los Angeles to happen to them in Chicago. And they're doing right by standing up and, and fighting and not taking it, laying down. Unfortunately, our brothers and sisters in Los Angeles kind of, you know, didn't pay attention to that. They was kind of, you know, trying to be on this coalition, but the coalition was actually to, you know, get rid of them. And we've seen the example of LA and a lot of our brothers and sisters had to leave LA. Some are still there, but they don't have the political capital they used to have. They don't have the numbers they used to have because a lot of them have decided to leave and not, it's understandable. It's completely understandable. But in Chicago, Mayor Brandon Johnson, they got a sister by the name of Zakia Muhammad that's actually voted for Brandon Johnson, that knew Brandon Johnson. And I told you guys before, and ladies, that when I did a series of interviews in Chicago and I spoke to several people while I was there, everyone knew Brandon Johnson from the work he used to do before. So it's not like he was you know, on something that he was on now versus back then. And this is going to kind of allude to some of this. Well, let's go ahead and roll that clip. And then after that, Brandon Johnson, which this clip took place about nine, the first clip nine days ago, and the second clip happened about seven days ago. Uh, well, he's going to go to the NAACP and the Black Preachers. And, oh, you already know I'm going to go with some of that. But let's roll a few clips. I would like to say good afternoon to the city council members, the media over there, and to my brother, Mayor Brandon Johnson, who we fought on some fronts together. And all those fronts we fought on together when I was with SEIU or anything else out there in the street, Brother Brandon, you have always been on the right side of history. That's why I campaigned for you and that's why I voted for you. That's why I encouraged others to vote for you because I knew and I felt in my heart you would be on the right side of history. And that meant including your people, descendants of enslaved Africans. Brother, you got to stop the buses from coming in. You just got to stop the buses coming in because it's hurting your people. I'm talking about descendants of enslaved Africans. We're hurting the things that our people been on the waiting list come for. The immigrants are coming in, getting everything, and I don't have time to go into all of it because I have another concern. When I used to come down here under Harold Washington, and we were fighting Ed Burke, Vidoliak, and the rest of the haters of black people that sat in these seats down here. We had two Latino aldermen. We had Louis Gutierrez and Jesus Garcia. They never pushed a black woman around. They never voted against black people's issues. They never hawk held meetings behind Mayor Washington's back to form committees. They never tried to take black wards and black precincts. I thought we were on our way to a black and brown coalition. But you know what? I thought I'd see it under you. But you know what? Carlos Ramirez, he spoiled all of that. And it was disrespectful to every black man down there on that floor, including you, that he's comfortable enough to put his body in front of a black woman, you understand, and tell her what she can't do. Because she know ain't no strong black men down there that's going to confront him. He know his people got his back. I wish it had been me he pushed. But I'll just go on to say this. Something has got to be done. Because all black women, women ain't satisfied with Emma Mick's apology. And, and, and forgive. We, all, we ain't for it. But back to the buses, my brother, please. Coming from your elder. We've been talking. The elder's been talking. We're looking for, for you to help us on this issue. Stop the buses. Please stop those buses from coming in here. Will you please? Thank you. This has been a real challenge for the people of Chicago. Mayor Brandon Johnson held a private meeting with several faith leaders and the director of the NAACP, Derek Johnson. They presented a united front, 
even though some Chicago residents and even aldermen have criticized Johnson's response to the migrant crisis. We must respect the fact that the residents of this city, as it is residents for cities across the countries, they want solutions that's both compassionate but also solutions that would not neglect the issues that they are confronted with every day in their everyday lives. The people who live here are saying, what have you really done special to help us? I have youth, I have families who are in desperate need. Marsha Eaglin with Impact Family Center sees the heavy equipment has arrived to build a tent city at the vacant lot at 115th and Halstead. Eaglin says the Johnson administration has not answered the community's questions. We had a meeting and we said what we wanted as a people, as a community, and it does look like some kind of action is happening here. And we just don't understand. I've never gotten word that there was anything that was moving forward on this. As for the participation of black faith leaders, Mayor Johnson insists their role is significant but he did not have any details. Can we move on? Because apparently, I've said it repeatedly, that, let me just make I'm clear, that black pastors have already stepped up in this moment. Of course we're having conversations about how the federal government and the state government has to do more. But I wanted to be emphatically clear, because if you're not hearing it, I want you to hear it clear. Black pastors are stepping up as they always have stepped up. So as you heard, sister Zakia Muhammad, she actually knew Brandon Johnson because of his work that he used to do in the community. It's the reason why people got behind him in Chicago. They canvassed for him. And ultimately, Brandon Johnson wanted to be a mayor. But something happened when he became a mayor is that he went away from doing his community work for the community, and he switched away from doing work in the black community to being blue. And we know when our black politicians are blue, they become very... Um, dangerous for us because they're not useful and they start getting on everything else, but what's happening in the black community. Now the black community is not saying for people who listens to this, we're not saying that he can't do for other groups. We're not saying that we're just saying that do for us like you do for others. And the biggest thing that black people are saying is that you're doing for people who's not even citizens of the country, who not residents of Chicago, who don't pay a dime in taxes in Chicago, and yet black Americans cannot get access to none of this help. They're not getting access to the $9,000 for rent. Then we covered the other Venezuelan person say they got $15,000 for rent. Basically the city wasted money because that guy didn't get no kind of job where he could have kept something up. He got literally put right back on the street. Now imagine if Chicago was cutting $9,000 or $15,000 checks for rent that can help people who need assistance in Chicago. They never even thought about doing a program like that whatsoever. So with sisters like Zakia Muhammad, and you hear about what happened with Alderman uh, Carlos Ramirez Rosa blocking Alderwoman Emma Mitts and, you know, the forgiveness thing, you know, we're not on that, but, but uh, uh, Sister Mitts, she's, you know, from that older generation that, you know, how that goes, but, you know, you see, Sister Muhammad here, she's not on that forgiveness. And I've talked about this before. I say that if black folks was actually, you know, if we had one religion, we should be. And, it, and I only say that for a reason. I say Islam would have been better. I said that before because, not because of the tenets of Islam or nothing like that, but I like how people that's, you know, practice Islam, they're not on that. I forgive, I forgive, I forgive. But you have to understand black people and how they got so-called Christianity, they got it from their slave master. And the slave master had a slave Bible, you understand? And they picked people like Nat Turner at the time to preach from the slave Bible, which was very redacted from the original scriptures. And they taught, they emphasized obey, obey your masters. They emphasized how uh, Jesus was white and, and be subservient and you're going to be good and your life will be great in the sweet by and by. You can't have heaven on earth and heaven in heaven either. They never taught any of that. And because we were taught by the slave master, Christianity, this is why Christianity had messed us up. Notice that you look at these younger black people, they're not dealing with the black church like that. And you notice how much they, now they're fighting. But when we was more deeper in, entrenched into the black church, what were we doing? Voting Democrat and just being cool with nothing. See all this, you asking for something now, that's different for the Democrats. Because they're not, you got to think about this. They're not used to you really demanding something. 
They used to you saying, well, I'll get my reward in heaven. If I just go ahead on and protect these good, these good, good folks, you know, that just gave us such a chance with the civil rights movement and the civil rights bill. They just gave us a chance with desegregation. I just thank God for that. So, Hey, I'm not going to cause no trouble. I'm not going to cause no trouble. I'll just get my reward in heaven with Jesus. That's when I'll get it. I'm not going to bother these good white people. That's really what, what a lot of it was on. It was all tied to Christianity and what's going on in Israel, Palestine and the way Americans think about that situation. A part of them is all tied back to their taught teachings of Christianity, right? So we have our brothers and sisters that has kind of, we believe in God. Of course we do. We are, we are a naturally spiritual people. We are the original people of the earth. We, we will have the first connection to God is us. Okay. Even we not in the church or the mosque or whatever, we still usually have a connection to the Lord. Unless, unless, unless you have entrenched yourself into what these folks are offering you, you know, uh, partaking in all their vices, that's usually what could disconnect you from your natural spiritual uh, connection uh, with the Lord, right? But now black people are demanding something, which if you read the scriptures, the Lord tell you to be bold. The Lord tell you to, to go and get things that you need and take a stand and be courageous that that's in the scriptures, but they never want to teach you that part of scripture. Right? So black folks are demanding something and Brandon Johnson. He's, he's literally like, say he's blue. Now he say, okay, all right. I got to calm these black people down. They, 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 cause it's black people. One thing about us and one thing I have learned is the, about the power of our voice. Even our collective silence is power. That's something I've learned with this Israel and Palestine thing that we have collectively said this as a community. I don't know about that. They've been fighting since that long. We, we, we need to go ahead and focus on our community. We need to focus on empowerment. We need to focus on reparations. We need to focus on the battles that we got here in America. If we talk about anything outside of that, we'll talk about what's going on in the diaspora. Outside of that, we, we just need to keep our energy where we is at because the problem we've had in the past, we spend our energy, our voice, and everything to other groups. And then what have we gotten back in return from these other groups? Nothing. So we have learned from that history. See, we thought that, hey, if I ally with this group, then when we need help, they're going to ally with us. We're going to have a bigger coalition to help us with our issues. In a real world, that sounds good. But in actuality and what history says, we fought for all these other groups. They have got into America. They have gotten citizenship. They've gotten in business. They've gotten all kinds of things that happened to all these other groups. And then when we say, hey, you know, okay, we need, we need some help. Stop being lazy. Go pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Like what? You wouldn't have what you have, but we didn't speak up for you. You know what I'm saying? They, they basically tell us to, you know, give us the bird. So since we learned from that history, we're not going to repeat that again. We're not ally. Listen, there's no allyship. And then even people like Michael Rappaport telling us that he got, they got a list. What are you going to take from a group of people that don't have nothing? What you going to take? They job. What you going to take? We lose that every day. What are, what are you going to do? Michael Rappaport and people that's making this list. What, what are you actually going to do? Michael Rappaport that came out talking about they going, because we was, we are silent. They got a list for people being silent. The power of our voice is very, very important. More than what I ever thought it was. I knew that, our voice rocks the world. I knew that, but I didn't even understand. I didn't realize till to this situation that the collective power of our silence is just as powerful as when we speak up. Now you have to understand only God has, has bestowed upon us that crown. And this is why everybody else, even, even the, the Palestinians want us talking for them. They don't want us quiet. And everybody's so shocked that, that we not stick, sticking up for nobody no more. We focusing on ourselves. So we focusing our energy on what's happening in something like Chicago. And as you see, 
the collective voice of, of black America on that issue is causing a problem. And you see what's happening in with the 2024 election. They can't understand what's going on. Why these black people are, are, are want to like Trump all of a sudden when three years ago, a lot of them saying black people couldn't stand Trump behind. They felt he was a freaking racist, a Nazi, a fascist and everything. And they have seen the light about that. And they say, nah, I'm cool with, with Trump now. That's what, that's what Boule Martin and the rest of the gang not talking about. Cause you'd have mentioned Trump name to, to, to the average black person three years ago. They'd have been snarling at you. Now them same people have come out and say, yeah, I'm cool on Trump. And then they, then they try to play this silly game about you a Republican. It's not about being Republican. We, it's a new day. We look at candidates as looking for our interests. Look at the black people in Chicago. Trump would actually be better for them than Biden. Biden, his policy is the reason why all these people have came to Chicago. When Trump was in office, Chicago wasn't dealing with that issue like that. Were they? The economy, black people are suffering. Listen, the economy and inflation is bad. My wife today went shopping, you know, for, for all the food, you know, all the family going to come over this week. My wife told me the bill today of the, and I, and I news and know what the kind of prices are. The prices are literally doubled, y'all. The amount of food my wife bought usually would run you about $200, close to $200. My wife came back today and told me she paid $416 on food. We have never spent that much money on no food for Thanksgiving. Now, I know some of you say, y'all don't celebrate that. Look, I told y'all, I'm past all that. Black folks going to get together and have their meals with their family. Black folks are Americans. They going to do that. Now, if you don't want to do it, do, that's you. Okay. Because we tried all that before and y'all were still doing it anyway. So you know what? Live your life, live your life. Do you, I know you're going to buy you Christmas and do you Christmas. Do you, I'm not I, one thing I've learned over the years by black folk. You're going to do what you want to do, do it. Okay. So, all the family getting together, which I love to get together with family and friends, right? Sit down and eat, and that's a great thing, right? And we ain't celebrating no what what they call Thanksgiving. We celebrate that. It's more so like a family day, a friends day. That's all we have done. We don't focus on them people and what they doing. Talking about no no uh, uh what the folks designate something for. So the food is so expensive, four hundred and sixteen dollars, y'all, for food, which we've never spent that much before. They wasn't happening when during the Trump administration. See, so the economy and this immigration issue, it's what's really getting black folks to say, yeah, well, we're Trump at. It's not by the Republican party. It's his policies. DeSantis. No, he didn't ruin himself in Florida with, with attacking black folk. Nikki Haley. No, I, I promise you this. If they, for some reason, get Trump not to be in there, we will set it out. I will set it out. Because I'm not going to go vote some Republican just because they're Republican. No, I'm looking at their policies. And if their policies would help, do we know Democrat policies don't help black people? We know that. So after, after seeing all these issues and problems, black folks are waking up. So now you go back to the second clip. Mayor Brandon Johnson tries to do the same old Democrat playbook. Well, let's go get the civil rights organizations, the NAACP. Let's go get the black preachers, Brandon Johnson. This is the problem, brother. Brandon Johnson, listen, brother. If you see this video, Brandon, I want you to be successful, brother. I really do. I don't, I don't want to keep making videos about what you're doing. Brother, they're using you. They're really using you. Listen to the streets. Listen to what the people are telling you. What the sister told you, Sister Muhammad told you, is the people you need to be listening to and taking, taking your cues from the community. Cause see the DNC is not going to do nothing for you, brother. I'm not going to make a choice that's going to alienate me from my community just for a political party or religious organization or civil rights organization or whatever, because I know at the end of the day, my community is going to have my back. You understand? The community is going to have your back at the end of the day. So you never alienate yourself from the community. 
prime example, like just even with me and what we're doing, you know, we, we, we have an app on the, uh, the Google play and Apple app store, you know, the Akron diaspora news channel app fences, right? People are coming in and starting to join the, get the app, join memberships there. Why? Because they want to support what we're doing so we can be completely independent eventually, right? No, we don't need no social media. Well, if I alienate our people and I try to go the route of the folks, then when the folks kick you out, cause which they will, then I can never go back to my people for anything. You know what I'm saying? Now the mistake you're making brother is this. No one in this day and time respects the NAACP brother. I would understand if we all respected NAACP, but we don't, we don't respect them. We don't respect the NAACP because they have proven themselves to be tied at the hip with the Democrat party. You can easily see that when you go to the issue section, they talk about climate change, like really climate change. We are a people of the sun. The hotter the sun get, it doesn't bother us. We absorb the sun. That's who we are. Climate change is for people who can't absorb the sun in the way we can and the sun can take them out. That's who climate change affects. We good. We've been on the earth for a long time. We're the original people of the earth. So I don't not worry about that. Has a climate change? Sure it has, but what are you going to do about it? That's the thing. Like you're not father God. So what are you going to do about it? So this, that's just one of the Democrat policies they have on their website that I just saw prior to me even going on this video. No one respects the NAACP. They, they be in, in talk. They're an all lives matter organization on paper. They'll say they for black folk, but they all lives matter. Let's call it what it is. The donors that they have, they have to kind of tap dance a little bit for their donors. And a lot of their donors is not coming from our community. The black preacher, the black preacher does not have any political clout authority with the black community anymore. Why? Because they're not doing what Dr. King did. See, Dr. King not only was preaching in the pulpit, but Dr. King was in these streets going head to head against this white supremacist. That's what Dr. King was doing. Those preachers, you never see them in the streets doing anything. They say behind the pulpit, talking about prosperity gospel, collecting tithes and offerings, right? And that's all they're good for. And that's fine. Do you have you had you preach? Do your thing. Uh, uh, have you your nice choirs and all of that? But when it comes to this real work of what's happening in black people life every day, which even if you read the scriptures, Jesus himself, the black man that he was, he was in the streets of the people every day. He wasn't in the temple. He was in the streets. So that alone, you're supposed to be following Christ. You're not following Christ because Christ was in the streets. Christ got involved in politics. Christ talked about the tax man. He, he got mad about people doing things in the church. Like, like they shouldn't be doing It's like so many different things that, that Christ got involved with that. Y'all preachers are not even getting involved with y'all scared to call out degeneracy. Cause you afraid your tithe off money gonna go away. That's why people don't respect y'all. They don't. So Brandon Johnson, you getting the black preacher and the NAACP brother. That's not going to help you. They have no influence, no voice. Now, they may have it maybe with the older crowd, but we don't respect them. And they're not trying to come talk to us. I'm talking about at least the NAACP, the urban league. They're not trying to talk to us because the last thing they want is people like us and our ideals, which is a more of an empowerment message for the black community and a true advancement of the black community. Right? Because if you were serious about black people, you would even change your name. You would change your name to the national association of empowerment and advancement of black people, not colored black. They let you know right now who we talking about. We talking about black people. We need to empower them and advance them. We're not all lives mattering anything. We no. we're not talking about no immigration. We're not talking about nothing. We talking about black American people. That's it. If you were serious and you're not serious and we see that. 
So Brandon Johnson, that's an epic failure, my brother. Then the, those men is not going to protect you. They're not going to shield you from criticism from the community. Brandon Johnson, you need to go ahead and just handle your business, brother. And I know you put it, I know you in, in a messed up situation at times because I've been to Chicago and it's a lot to deal with. I get it. You got to take care of the business community. You got to take care of the every community. But the, the problem is Brandon Johnson, you was voted in to take care of your constituents, not people from Venezuela or wherever they coming from. You didn't get voted in for that. And you got to remember that if you care about your political future, sir, you will focus on your people. That's what I would do. I'm going to focus on, I'm going to focus on my people that got me there. Or, you, or I won't stay in that job long. You can never forget your base. Don't allow the Democrat party to get you to have your political life cut short because you neglected your base. See the Democrat party have neglected their base and that's why they in trouble is no, it, listen, if Biden and the Democrats did the right thing, there's no way Trump should be um, showing in polls ahead of Biden. It shouldn't be happening. How you, and nobody want to talk about this. How within three years when the majority of black people couldn't stand Trump, they thought he was the, the, the Nazi of the of America. Now the same people who said that lament to say I was wrong. Now I want to vote for Trump. They're not having that conversation. They keep talking about black people basically stupid. Um, now, now they got a new word. Now they saying y'all civic, 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 civic. Oh my God. Y'all sound like a, a trained animal. When you learn a new word, I hate, I just hate that. It's like a parrot to me. It's like, you it sound like a parrot, civic, 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 civic. I learned a new word today. Civics, uh, civics, civics, one-on-one civics. Civ like I say, Oh Jesus Christ. My Lord, can y'all just stop with that civic stuff conversation y'all having? Er, you wasn't saying nothing about civics until I guess they told y'all DNC, put out the term civics. It, it makes it sound so smart. Like, you see y'all sound dumb. You don't have to say a word constantly like that. We know it's like propaganda by now. Like, it's not the old days. You know, we call y'all out in real time. You understand what I'm saying? So, this is the thing, Brandon Johnson. Just do right by the people that voted you, my brother. That's it. Your people say turn their buses around. Send, send them to other cities. Hey, matter of fact, Brandon Johnson, that's what I would do. Since Governor Pritzker uh, 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 is complaining that you're not moving fast enough, this, see, that would offend me, actually, if I was you, Mayor Johnson. That would offend me that Governor Pritzker said you're not moving fast enough. You know what I would do? I'd say, okay, I'm instructing Chicago police to send them to Springfield. Drop them right off in Springfield at the governor, uh, at the state house, drop them off over there. And since you could move faster than me, we're going to send them to Springfield. That's what I would do. I would send them right to Springfield. And then you, I want to see how fast you move, sir. See, he couldn't have said that to me because see, I'm that type. I'm like, Oh, Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Well, I got, I got a place for y'all to go now. Since, since cause the governor's going to move a lot faster than me. Oh, he'd be hot with that though. If he sent them to Springfield, Brandon Johnson, that's what I would do, bro. Send them to Springfield. Trust me. And all that money that you allocated for, for the migrants, take that same money and allocate that money for the people that voted for you. Matter of fact, shoot, you really want to make people happy? Give them all stimulus. So you know what? We spend all these millions of dollars. We're going to give everybody in the city a stimulus. Just, just because, you know, we want to appreciate y'all for dealing with all this stuff and, and the inconvenience. So let's give y'all stimulus. Trust me, the people say, man, Mayor Johnson, I love him, man. He gave us a stimulus. I'm telling you, it's not that hard to make people happy, Mayor Johnson. It's not that hard, you know, but, but y'all Democrats, y'all just, you know, y'all will go down, you know, to the end practicing benign neglect against your constituents. But you know, it, yeah, if you was a real, you, you was a, 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 a on one of, on your manhood, sending migrants to Springfield with governor Prisca, since he talked down on you like that. Cause he talked down on you and he said, you're not moving fast enough. You know, if you wasn't moving at all, then people, people wouldn't be complaining about all the money you're spending. Right. But, um, you know, it's people in Chicago, like I said, you know, we with y'all and y'all fight because if you do not fight. Chicago will turn into LA and what happened to LA, all the black people got pushed out of all the areas and all the, all those that, that did not build up LA came in and then they became hostile to the point of attacking black folks. You don't want that in Chicago. So stand and fight.